Yes, ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's EO Talks Football. We're back again with another video. Arsenal just played Bayern, Le Bayer Leverkusen. And Granit Xhaka making a return back to the Emirates since he left and became invincible with Leverkusen. Now, this was a game where I thought Arsenal were going to get really tested, but we really made it a cakewalk, a professional performance. And it was a good game might I add. So we're going to talk about everything that happened, everything we learned, and everything that I wanted to mention. But before we go any further, please do hit that like button on this video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get into everything Arsenal today. Let's go. Yes, 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 people, what's going on in Seagull Talks Football? Now, before we get into the lineups and everything else, we need to speak about certain players that did not actually feature in this game before we talk about the actual game itself. Now, you had the likes of Yuri Timber, who did not feature due to an actual injury. He has a load-bearing injury, which is which is basically uh, uh, was, was reported by this man here, Greg Jacobs. This is quite normal for players during preseason and, of course, players that are coming back from injury. So this is not something that we should be extremely worried about. But that is why Urien Timber did not feature in the game himself. Now, there's also some other players that we need to discuss and some other things that we need to discuss before we go any further. So please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And let me just show you guys the lineup that Arsenal went with for this game because I think that is crucial for you guys to understand what happened in this game and how the game went. Now, Arsenal did win. Arsenal won quite comfortably, might I add, in, in, to be in, to be exact. And this was what our fourth preseason game. We we uh, our first game back at the Emirates in 2024-2025 season, and it was a memorable one. We scored four goals. You had Olivia, uh, you had Zinchenko score. You had Trussard score, and both of them were actually set up by none other than Kai Havertz. You then also had Gabriel Jesus make a beautiful run, like 40, 20, 30, 40 yards. I don't remember exactly how much. Came into the final third and striked the ball quite well. And boom, uh, made it three uh, made it three nil from there. Then you also had Kai Havertz get us the fourth goal from a Bukayo Saka setup. And then later in the game, uh, Leverkusen pegged one back well, with Adam... Whole kick, uh pulling one back for them. Of course, Mikel Arteta would be delighted with the result overall. We even seen the likes of Raya, William Saliba, Bakayo Saka, and Declan Rice also get back into the fold. But the first thing we need to speak about, things that we learned in today's game. I thought one major thing that we learned in today's game was the left-hand side was cooking. I could not, I cannot tell you how many times I, I've seen the left-hand side cook, but today... The left-hand side was cooking, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to show you guys uh, some of these players and some of the people that we need to highlight in this game before we get into everything else. First things first, as you can see here, this is why I wanted to point this out. As you can see here, Zinchenko getting his opening goal from an assist from Kai Havertz. Uh, Trustard getting his goal from an assist from Kai Havertz as he wins the ball high up the pitch and gets it to him. The, uh, for, for Zinchenko, it was more of a cutback into the into the final third from Kai Havertz as he drifted into the left. And for Gabriel Jesus, he did his own thing to get that goal. And of course, Bakayo Saka set up uh, Kai Havertz. Now, before we go any further, I just want to talk about this situation here. One, on numerous occasions, I've said that Kai Havertz should not be playing in the midfield. But today's performance showed that he's fully capable of doing that. And against certain teams, we might need him in the midfield. It gives us much more versatility. And understand that this was a we went against a team that, that plays with a three at the back. A team that a team that, that doesn't necessarily have too many people clogging the lane, as Florian Witzer and these guys. Of course, they do they are a little bit more central, but a little bit more attacking players in Florian Witzer. So you don't have to necessarily worry too much about about too much of that with Zinchenko also there. So it was almost like default, we went to a back three at times. It was more like 
a back three with Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel. Zinchenko was higher up the pitch. Jorginho, Odegaard, and Fabio Vieira were the midfield. And then the front three was basically Jesus, Trussard, and Havertz. Havertz was sitting behind these two, trying to just pick up and disrupt players. Kai Havertz, by the way, was amazing today. And we're going to talk about Kai Havertz in a second. But I just the first thing that we picked up today was the left-hand side was absolutely cooking, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we go any further... We, we are going to speak about Zinchenko. The reason why we're going to speak about Zinchenko, Zinchenko did really well in the opening minutes, and I thought he kind of ran the show. Zinchenko is going to be used, utilized this upcoming season. As much as some people don't like Zinchenko and they thought last season he was somewhat of a liability, he is going to be an important player for Arsenal, and he will be utilized in the coming in the coming months, uh, year. You're going to see a lot of Zinchenko. So Number uh, number two, Zinchenko, get used to him. He's got a new shirt number. He's going to be played against majority of the teams with lower blocks. And with and as much as you might have wanted to see him move on or some people might have seen him move on, he will be part of this team. And I just want to know what you guys think. Let me know how you guys feel about Zinchenko still being in and amongst the team because he will be part of the squad for the foreseeable future. Next, um, Leandro Trossard. This guy, Leandro Trossard, just steps up every time. He was one of the man of the matches. Uh, by the way, let me know who you thought your man of the match was. For me, it was definitely Kai Havertz. But I think Leandro Trossard is definitely one of those guys that you can give a shout for a man of the match. Also, Le also Zinchenko uh, as, a, as a shout for a man of the match. I thought both of them were quite good. And Le it, he was all over the place. I think... If Fabio Vieira can learn a thing or two from Leandro Trossard, because he has an ability to get into space and 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 win and win battles without having to use trickery or speed, he just he just knows how to get on and off the ball, how to be impactful in the final third, and that's what we need from guys like Fabio Vieira, Eddie Nketiah. But Leandro Trossard just has that in abundance, so he's another baller. Uh, before we get into the next person that we're going to have to speak about because he uh, he was outstanding. I'm just going to speak uh, quickly speak about Jesus. It was nice to see Jesus uh, be a big factor in this game. But one thing we need from Gabriel Jesus' upcoming season is if Gabriel Jesus can stay fit. Because Gabriel Jesus, we cannot doubt for one second how good of a player he is if he can stay fit and if he doesn't have any injury issues. The problem at Arsenal is that he's had these last two years is that he's been in, in and out of the side at times and it causes disruption to his flow and it causes him disruption to, to getting into the zone. I think we could play a team with him playing up top and Jesus in the midfield, but only against certain teams. And when he does play, he could give us a job in many different positions. I think Gabriel Jesus is going to be a very important player for us. He has a big role this upcoming season and preseason just solidifies that for me. One thing I need from him is to try to somehow stay fit and available for the remainder of the uh, summer, uh, remainder of the season if he can. That will be crucial for Arsenal Football Club. Now, it is time to talk about the man himself, Kai Havertz. I thought Kai Havertz was outstanding today. I thought Kai Havertz was something else. I and I think Kai Havertz will continue to 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 be to be that guy for the foreseeable future. Everybody was wrong on Kai Havertz. This guy is going to absolutely ball out for Arsenal this upcoming season. He is not a 60 million down the drain, they said. Kai Havertz scored again today. He set up two assists. He was all over the place. He's making runs in every single area. He's just causing so much disruption. I think number 29 is going to get your he's going to get Arsenal 29 plus GA. That's I think he's going to get us more than his shirt number in GA in all competitions. Call it bold, call it whatever you want. What I'm seeing from him this preseason, he's just everywhere. I don't think there's going to be it's going to be tough to drop him. Also, Lucky for luckily for us, Kai Havertz is somebody who stays fit and available consistently. Kai Havertz today once again was one of these star players in this game. Kai Havertz once again was an important piece to the cog, and Kai Havertz once again got involved in numerous goals and got an assist. He is he's having a wonderful, wonderful start to his preseason, and I hope he can he can get it going into the regular season. That will be important for me. Now. I wanted to speak about some of the negatives also. Um, first of all, I want to show you guys the way that we set up today. We had Fabio Vieira playing on the right, and I thought that was quite poor 
Fabio Vieira playing on that on that right hand side. I thought he was quite poor. I did not like how he looked. He did not look comfortable on the right side. He did not look sharp on the ball, off the ball. He was not able to uh, uh, to, uh, to get to get in, get into it. He didn't fit in. He just doesn't look like he fits in Mikel Arteta's plans right now. So I need to see more from him, and I need to see something better from him because this right now is just not the best. And I, I, I'm hopeful that we can see more in the foreseeable future from, uh, from him in this situation. But at this moment in time, he did look quite poor. Also, uh, another thing that I wanted to point out, um, I'm not talking about Miles Lewis Skelly or anything like that. It was nice to see Declan Rice get involved, but Kyle Saka get involved. Of course, William Saliba started the game, meaning that the, or David Rea also, that means these guys who, who are back from international duty are ready to go for the first game of the season. Even even more importantly, they're getting minutes in preseason to, with the team. That is crucial. Under Arsene Wenger, we would have never done that. Also, um, there are some unused substitutes that we need to speak about. Aaron Ramsdale has not played a single minute yet for Arsenal. He needs to get sold or else we need to figure out what we're going to do with him because it does look like he is on the move. Why would Arteta not give him even a single minute in preseason? Plus, Reese Nelson didn't even get a single minute in this game either. So could Reese Nelson be headed out the door? Plus, Eddie Nketiah got given the captaincy after he came on in the 70th minute. So could Eddie Nketiah also be headed out the door? These are all questions that we need to ask ourselves, and we need to see if these are if we're going to get the answers that we want on these questions. At this moment in time, I am not going to jump the gun and start saying, oh, 100% these players are all leaving or this is happening or that is happening. We just have to wait and see where things escalate from here. But yeah, it was nice to see Arsenal players back at the Emirates. It was also nice to see Granit Xhaka back at the Emirates. Uh, of course, we uh, Mikel Arteta gave him a hug. He got a standing ovation from the fans as he was leaving. And also these two youngsters, once again, putting in a good performance. And it would be nice to see Ethan Winervi or Maz Luis Skelly get opportunities once the season starts. But for now, we have to wait. We have to wait for the season to begin. We have to wait to see what happens. And I'm just going to leave it there. That's that's the, Those are the things that I wanted to touch on today. Those are the things that I learned from today's game. Let me know what you guys think you, you learned that I didn't mention. And yeah, not too much to talk about Leverkusen's team. I thought they were, I thought they were quite underwhelming. They didn't play their best, but maybe we have more of an advantage because maybe we've had a longer preseason than them. But as of right now, good game. Let's see where we go from here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and I'm out, people. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.